Nine days after the September 11th terror attacks, President George W. Bush, in an address to Congress, used for the first time the phrase war on terror. He added that America's enemies were the, quote, radical network of terrorists and every government that supports them. President Bush's approach to not only al-Qaeda, but other foreign adversaries, such as China and Russia, are the subject of a new book published yesterday. It's entitled handoff the foreign policy george w bush passed to barack obama and it makes public for the first time a set of newly declassified transition memoranda 30 of them prepared by president bush's nsc staff for the incoming obama administration to outline the key foreign policy challenges it would face and joining us now former national security advisor for president bush for president george w bush stephen hadley he's one of the book's editors and uh, uh, thank you for coming on the show it's good to see you um what do we learn about the george w bush uh, administration foreign policy in these documents and, and how it applies to challenges that we face today. Well, thanks for being had a chance to be on the show. The, what the book will really shows is what the in these transition memos, what the staff thought they had accomplished and what remained to be done under the uh, Obama administration. Uh, as we saw it at the end of the administration in 2008. I think if you look at the book, it, it corrects a lot of mythology about the Bush, Bush administration. A lot of people think the only thing we did was Iraq, Afghanistan, and the war on terror. And if you just look at the table of contents, you see that simultaneously we were handling the full range of foreign policy issues that you outlined. I think the second thing that comes from the, the book is that a lot of the initiatives and conceptualization and implementation of the policies of the administration are really in hands of the president. I don't think people realize how much in any administration the president is the chief strategist for that administration and the source of a lot of the energy for its initiatives. And finally, I think the other thing that comes from the book is you see that American leadership in the world is still crucial. None of the major initiatives, whether it's dealing with proliferation or terrorism or pandemic diseases or the diseases that were ravaging Africa at the time, none of those initiatives would have happened without American leadership, without America taking a first step and then rallying the international community to uh, follow in behind. I think those lessons are important for Americans to understand when they think about America's role in the world. Well, and Stephen, what a fascinating, what a fascinating book and what a fascinating look at two administrations that were supposedly polar opposites uh, and yet strangely linked by a financial crisis where Barack Obama and, and George W. Bush were basically teammates. Uh, Bush handed the baton to Obama, who finished what he began after September the 15th, um, uh, but also uh, with the war on terror. Uh, Barack Obama went into the White House. Uh, wanting to define himself uh, by being everything that George W. Bush and Dick Cheney were not. And we saw time and again, um, whether it was drone strikes or what, whether it was how he executed the war against terror, uh, that, that there were some things that he was, was inexorably linked to the Bush administration on and not only followed uh, many of those policies, but actually amped them up here and there. That's true. You know, one of the best kept secrets in Washington, and I think for the country, is how much continuity there is in foreign policy between administrations, even administrations of, uh, of different parties. And I think the other thing that people miss is that any administration will start initiatives whose success or failures really will be determined by their successors and whether the successors pick up on those initi initiatives and carry them forward. That was certainly true of the war on terror. It was certainly true of what we were trying to do in Afghanistan and Iraq. We weren't going to produce stability in either of those countries within the space of one administration. But they were going to have to be handed over and become the responsibility of subsequent administrations to, uh, to finish the job. So in the book's chapter on Russia, 
under future challenges. The memoranda transferred to the Obama administration highlights the importance of defending Russia's neighbors. And it reads in part, quote, Russia is now trying to reassert its influence with tactics of intimidation and direct meddling and interference in the sovereign affairs of its neighbors. Russia's intense opposition to NATO enlargement to Georgia and in particular to Ukraine will continue to undermine these countries' ability to maintain a Western path. The next administration will be confronted with the challenge of how to reverse Russia's advance into Georgia, stop further Russian provocations, and restore Georgia's territorial integrity. Furthermore, Russia attempts to challenge the territorial integrity of Ukraine, particularly in Crimea, which is 59 percent ethnically Russian and is home to the Russian Navy's Black Sea Fleet, must be prevented. Russia covert action and propaganda activities to heighten ethnic tensions in Crimea and maintain instability in the region will likely continue, and Kadi K, it certainly did. Yeah, I mean, what a prophetic memo mm -hmm. that was, Stephen, when you were writing it. I mean, you know, I, I remember during the 2008 campaign, of course, it was John McCain who said, we're all Georgians now, and Georgia, as you see in that memo, also the focus of your White House's attention. So if you look at two, from 2008 to 2022, what were the missed opportunities insofar as it came to Russia and Vladimir Putin in particular? What, what more could have been done during the two, two administrations of President Obama and then Donald Trump to contain Russia and perhaps head off what we now see happening in Ukraine? You know, Katie, when they went into Georgia, one of the things we said at the time is, uh, if we do not inflict a strategic defeat on Putin for having gone into Georgia, today it will be Georgia, tomorrow will be Ukraine, and the day after it'll be the mm. Baltic states. And of course, the Baltic states being in NATO, if Russia were to go into the Baltic states, it would be war between Russia and NATO. So we saw this pattern coming. And it was one of the efforts we tried to, to do after he went into Georgia to really throw the whole relationship in the toilet, to basically say, you can't have a constructive relationship with the West if you do these kinds of things in Georgia. I think probably more should have been done then. More should certainly have been done in 2014 when, when uh, Russia goes into Ukraine for the first time. I think. We tried to have, in the Bush administration, a constructive relationship with Russia. We had a lot of cooperation with Russia. We tried to bring them in the international system to convince Putin that he had a historic opportunity to bring Russia into the West. He decided not to take that opportunity. At the same time, we strengthened our alliances. We strengthened uh, NATO by expanding its numbers and expanding its members as a hedge, if you will, to against the possibility that Russia would become, sadly, exactly what it has been become an angry revanchist power pursuing a vision of restoring a Russian empire within the space of the former Soviet Union. That's a vision that is at stake in Ukraine. And if we are not able to support the Ukrainians to the extent that they can defeat Russian strategic objectives in Ukraine, we'll see more of this. That's the fear. The book is entitled Handoff, the Foreign Policy George W. Bush Passed to Barack Obama. It's available now. Former National Security Advisor Stephen Hadley, thank you for being on this morning. We appreciate your coming on the show.